Hello YouTube, Captain Dave here with Third Wave. Today I want to talk about our search for the right Ethernet controlled relay product. Uh, it's going to be used with our Glass Helm implementation on Third Wave. Now there's a lot of choices out there, but I think you could break it down into kind of like three grades. The first is a hobbyist grade, and this class of product has the most choices. Um, you could buy these all over Amazon and eBay, and those using these kind of products are probably using Arduino or some other small embedded computing board to communicate with them. Uh, this class of product is just a little too basic for our application. Uh, all of these are uh, essentially bare boards with no enclosures to speak of and require um, you to program in the Arduino environment, which is far too limited for what we're trying to do. And when I say most choices, I, I really mean the most manufacturers, but they're all pretty much trying to sell the same thing, a low end bare board with zero software support. And again, this is just not uh, something we can consider. So that's the low end. At the high end, you have commercial grade products and they want you know, six or $700 for an eight channel ethernet relay. These have really nice enclosures and commercial grade connectors, but they're just way too expensive for what you get. In the middle, there isn't nearly as much choice as at the low end, but we have tried a few of the products in this space. Uh, one of the products we tried is the Kinkoni unit you see um, here. Let me zoom in just a little bit. And the other product um, that's worth mentioning is the Denkovi, D-E-N-K-O-V-I, uh, Ethernet Relay. And Denkovi is a company out of Bulgaria, and if you know anything about firmware, um, you know, hate to be stereotypical, but the Slavic countries tend to do a very good, uh, very good job at firmware implementation. Their documents are written in perfect English, and their stuff just works. Um, they, for example, go the extra mile with the with the firmware by incorporating a web server where all the setup is done. You know, using a web server on the product, but all that nicety is expensive. So we paid like one hundred eighty dollars for an eight channel Denkovi relay board. And uh, yes, it uses more expensive relays than the um, Kinkoni you see in front of you, but um, we those those relays are larger too. So you, know, you can see with my hands as a reference. Let me zoom back out here. You can see with my hands as a reference that this is sort of a five inch by eight inch product, um, and uh, this is really the kind of size that we're looking for. Also, Denkovi just sells their controller boards without enclosures. And as you can see, the Kinkoni comes with a very nice metal enclosure. It's got nice push-button connectors uh, for the relays. It's got nice push-button connectors for the readable ports. Um, and it's, you know, it's really just a, a pretty good uh, construction. So... Um, Again, um, the, the, the Denkovi software interface to their product is more capable, but it's also more complex. The, this Kinkoni unit has the right value proposition for what we're trying to do. Um, it's got a very simple programming interface, and it packs 32 channels of these 5-amp relays, read relays, into a small space. And importantly, while it comes with a wall warp, um, you know, the DC input level is 12 volts, and that's very important in any vehicle type application and often overlooked. It seems like 5 volt input or even 18 volt or sometimes 24 volt AC um, is being used as the input voltage and that's just none of those are any good for vehicular applications where where you know it's all 12 volt. Um, so um, if I had to complain about anything it would be that they should have mounted the uh, RS-232 into the metal plate um, and they should have definitely mounted the power connector into the metal plate uh, just for more strength uh, but other than that um, I think it's really nothing to complain about when it comes to you know product build quality and, and that sort of thing what's always more of a concern with these Chinese products is the firmware and again, I hate to be stereotypical, but I've got 35 years in the software industry as a developer, manager, etc. And I can just tell you for a fact, Chinese firmware and software hasn't caught up to Chinese hardware. 
it's gotten better over the years, just like Chinese hardware has, and it will eventually get there, but it's still a concern. Uh, Chinese tend to test to make sure things work. They hardly ever test corner concerns or, you know, failure modes or, or corner cases, those sorts of things. Um, also, many Chinese companies still refuse to hire native English-speaking people to write their manuals, make their videos, and all that kind of stuff. And while I give Kinkoni high marks for effort because they have ticked off, you know, all the support boxes, right? For example, written documentation, uh, reasonably well organized on their website for download. They've got pre-written software and in some cases source code. They've even done a couple of YouTube videos, which is a underutilized resource for, um, for marketing for companies, if you ask me. They even have some people that monitor the comments on YouTube and respond. But the documentation is kind of a mess, and it's hard to understand the people talking in their videos. Uh, so it's just too bad all this casts, you know, a less than, you know, five-star Paul on what is actually a good product at a good price. Additionally, the software they actually provide really isn't uh, up to snuff. First of all, they drop the ball on the choice of source language. Nobody wants to install and learn new development tools and languages. Um, their Relay 32 program is written in Visual Basic, and another application they make available for source download is written in Delphi. Who uses Visual Basic or Delphi for any serious programming these days? Now, the most popular OS is Windows, the most popular language in the world is C, and the most popular integrated development environment is Visual Studio. So it only makes sense that demos with source code download come in the form of a Visual C solution file. But... King Coney doesn't do that. So I, I got to take off uh, points for that. In any case, um, I was forced to write my own TCP interface to the relay, uh, and I will demo that shortly. Um, and I, another thing I could demo here is that their software really doesn't handle any errors. For example, let me get their software running quickly. Okay, so powered up the relay. I'm going to connect their program to it. I'm going to scan things, and now I can control relays. You can see the relays coming on on the board. Great. Um, and so what happens if now the power goes out on their, on their system? Uh, well, what happens with the software? Um, it crashes. So, um, in order to deal with this, you know, I've I've went and went ahead and written my own software, um, and it's uh, called Kinkoni Relay TCP Client, and you can see it sort of running in the background there. The goal isn't to use the software as is. The goal is to just get it into a, a nice modular TCP programmable environment for. Um, you know, ANSI C and Visual Studio, and I'll provide a link to my GitHub um, where you can download this yourself in, you know, uh, you know, in the comments down below. But the bottom line is, uh, Kinkoni got it 95% right with this product, and I can work around the issues myself. So I happily give this product 4.5 stars out of 5. And again, if you want to try my sample code, you can, you can find it in my GitHub repo link below. Thanks, YouTube. Bye-bye.